Welcome everyone to the Great Culture Wars here in EU4 and I had a look at the wars a little bit off camera and one that was kind of interesting was the Piedmontese and a Sardinian uh, excommunication war against the Swiss because just a couple of years ago the Swiss were actually uh, the courier controller and now uh, the uh, current queen is excommunicated um, and they're actually in quite a lot of wars I mean they are defending all of them um, and the first one against Franconia, they're actually winning so far. But now that they're being distracted by Piedmont, I, I don't know. Because Liguria's not in this, they have apparently broken their alliance with the Swiss. Yeah, so, um, I don't know. But I, I, don't, I don't think that the, the Swiss will be will really be able to um, win all of these wars. They have almost no allies left. Yeah, nobody, nobody has joined in that other war that, that Piedmont has declared. So that's looking bad for them. Looking really bad for them. Now, the other war that is probably uh, interesting to a lot of people is this war. This is actually the Turkish Jihad against the Bulgarians. And they called in their Muslim buddies in Crimea in Syria. But so far, I mean, we've seen at the end of the last episode that they won some very important uh, battles here in, in Ankara 2 actually which was interesting because I would have thought that the Greek Bulgarian and Romanian alliance would have been able to push them back but no they pulled out of this war too early but now okay they're moving their troops in again 60,000 men there's reinforcements coming ooh, on both sides oh, but this time it was the Greek alliance once again that struck home and won this battle so Ankara uh, stays in the hands of the Bulgarians and we'll see how things turn out. I mean, the Bulgarians have a uh, core on Adirn. They have a claim on Constantinople. And it's likely that they will get these two provinces uh, in the peace deal. Um, but they also have some cores here in Sivas. And they have another core that is held. Uh, they actually have a core in Amasya. And they have a core here, right? Um, because Sivas, they still control. So we'll have to see how things turn out. But I definitely think that it's the, uh, it's the Christians. Who will drive back the Muslims here in this in this epic war? It's really cool. It's really cool to see that we have like this huge uh, Catholic realm, which, by the way, is now being. Uh, we now have a reformed Burg Burgundy that have yeah, unfortunately had a center of reformation actually spawn in their capital. Um, now it looks like. It looks like Burgundy has actively converted to the reform, but that's not true. The first center always spawns randomly, and it happened to spawn in the Burgundian capital. Uh, so, yeah, they, they did not do this by choice. But now they're reformed, and we still have the, the Protestants who are not doing too well. They have converted a few other capitals, like the one of the Czechs, but I'm not sure. If no one actively converts, I think the Protestants will have a big problem. But uh, what I actually wanted to say, we have the Catholics here, obviously. We have... Um, Still Sunnis in, in in Iberia, and now we have the Orthodox trying to push back against the uh, the Muslims here in Anatolia. It's really it's really a diverse region here with uh, the Caucasus in, in Orthodox hands, but uh, most of Asia Minor still held by the Muslims. Now that the uh, Catholic Sicilians have been uh, pushed back, so yeah. Now, however, okay. Just a few days later, we have uh, the Turkish pushing back. They're now besieging Athens, the capital of the Greeks. How is that? How is it even possible? In fact, Athens. No, Athens is still the capital. How is that possible? They were just beaten at Ankara, and now they have managed to retake Adrian, Constantinople, and siege the Greek capital. What the hell happened? I actually don't know. It might be because, yeah, the Bulgarians are busy besieging uh, the Crimeans. That might be it. That is totally not, that's totally not worth it, having your troops stand around here. Um, so that will probably cost them, especially with Sofia now, the uh, capital of the Bulgarians, under siege by the, the Syrian forces. Ooh. Now, one advantage a lot of the Europeans will have is the, uh, are the institutions. Colonialism has spread from the, uh, from the English all the way to uh, the, the Iberians, French, and uh, yeah, is now spreading into... Even Karelia uh, and Muscovy has it has colonialism before the Romanians do in Italy. That's actually kind of interesting how that spreads, but I guess it's because it spreads faster along the coast than it does inland. So the Rhenish, who are very close to the English actually, don't have it yet, whereas we have it over here already. And I guess some of these nations have already uh, saved up the money and embraced it immediately. But yeah, it, it looked really good for the Bulgarian-Greek alliance. 
uh, and the Crimeans have been pieced out of this war, uh, and they had to break their alliance with the Turkish, they're now just allied to the Muscovites, which is an interesting alliance, by the way, but um, I'm not sure how this is going to go. Tunisians have declared a war on the Ligurians and the Tuscans as well. In fact, they are probably in the same war. Yeah, they are. Uh, the Neapolitans are in this as well. So Tunisia is probably going to take over these lands. Yeah, they, they have all of this occupied. And the Tuscans might even establish a, a small realm of their own now that they have been kicked out of Italy. So that's good for them. Perhaps even they're going to get their provinces back. That's not unlikely. Um, Portuguese are occupied by the Leonese, but they didn't have to give in any provinces. That is interesting. They have vassalized the Bosques. That is also interesting to see. I was wondering why no one was attacking them, but I guess that's the reason for it. What happened to the Portuguese? Because they didn't have to give in. They didn't have to give up any provinces, at least not that I can see. Um, so that's interesting. We are still have English Brazil here. Uh, the Norman uh, colonization is obviously being slowed down quite a bit. And they do not have a colonial nation in Canada just yet, but it will happen soon. And then they will have the Treaty of Tordesillas for that region. The Finnish took over Stockholm from the Swedes and the Highlanders got their cores back. That's nice to see for them. The Saxons grew a little bit stronger as well, so did the Wallonians. But the Flemish kept their lands together. The Gascons took a bite out of the Burgundians, it seems like. Who are now... Yeah, they, they actually lost province to the Architans, which... Was that in this war? I'm not too sure, but they, they actually lost. They had to give up a province to the Swiss. Uh, this core province was held by the Swiss, or was held by the Burgundians before. And they had to give up a province here as well. And now it's the Swiss. Wow. They had to give that province right back to the Burgundians. And they also had to give their capital province um, to the Piedmontese. Okay. Well, that's, that's certainly interesting. And the Franconians just took a huge amount of provinces from the Czechs. What the hell is happening? When are these wars even happening? I don't even know. But yeah, what's what's going on up here? The Dutch are fighting a big war together with the Danish, I suppose, against the Pomeranians. Yep, this is the Dutch, Saxons, and, uh, and well, basically the Danish fighting Pomeranians. Now, this is a big deal, because if Saxony, if Saxony actually gets something out of this deal, they could get a whole lot of their cores back. Because most of their cores are actually held by the Pomeranians. A few of them are held by the... Uh, a few of them are actually held by the Czechs. But everything else is basically held by the Pomeranians. So they have they have all of this occupied. If they get even more war score by perhaps even taking over Berlin, yes. This could be really good for them. Now, the question is, will the Danish actually give them their lands back? It's possible, but it's not very likely. I think... Oh, okay, never mind. They actually did give them back... Well, I think one, two, three, four of their cores, five perhaps even, and uh, immediately they broke their lines with the Danish. Not sure if that was smart, but I think that was because the the Danish are now in a war against the Normans. What is this? What is this all about? Uh, Norman conquest of Dithmarschen. Okay, so the it looks like the the Saxons did not want to be involved in that war. That's probably not a smart. Not a dumb move, I would say, because they have the alliances, the Wallonians and Franconians, pretty strong allies. They don't really need the Danish anymore. They served their purpose by helping them cut down the Pomeranians. And now, uh, if rebels spawn, I mean, those are just peasants, but should there be any Saxon separatists, they would, you know, they could easily spawn. The Pomeranians wouldn't be able to do anything about this, and these lands would go to the Saxons. So this is actually how I would have done. This is exactly, I would have taken these provinces to cut Pomerania in half. And uh, so that I could take off these promises later. So Saxony might come back. I like that. Um, but yeah, the Greeks, I think they have pieced out of this war. Yep, so it's Bulgaria now um, fighting Transylvania. So apparently they managed to conclude a peace with uh, the Syrians and Turkish. I guess they were... I guess they were not too interested in, the, in these wars. Yep, it, the Bulgarians didn't lose any more lands. And I don't think the Turkish did either. Perhaps the Romanians lost lands? No. None of their lost lands. It's just that Bulgaria has no more friends. And now uh, Transylvania has attacked them and will probably just take them all over. It's possible. Let's have a last, uh, not a last look, but let's have another look at the religions. Okay, so the reformed are spreading. We now have a unoccupied province being reformed. Interesting. That's a nice focus you got there. Um, but other than that... 
nothing has really changed for the uh, Christian Protestants there. Okay, um, Crimea seems to be getting tag teamed now. Ryazan, Novgorod, Karelia, Ruthenia, and Albania uh, fighting Muscovy and Crimea. Okay, what am I clicking right now? There we are. Okay. Ooh, Musco Muscovy is in is in trouble. I don't think they can. I don't think they can do this. I mean, Novgorod and Ruthenia are not too important. Albania is probably possible, probably capable of of you know defeating the Crimeans or at least holding their own against the Crimeans. Uh, and Ryazan and Karelia is probably way too much for Muscovy to to handle. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if Muscovy can hold on to their lands. If they do, props to them. But I think they, they will crumble and they will have to give tons of lands back to the Novgorodians. Uh, but we shall see. We shall see. Um, yeah, the Danish will now have to get... Well, they still have the Dutch on their side. So they should actually be able to deal with the Normans. Because they haven't brought in any allies, have they? They did bring in the Norwegians. But they did not bring in the Wallonians. So I think the Danish should be okay. The Danish should be okay. Let me see. Uh, they're being besieged, um, so it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. All of their, all of the enemies are for some reason in the Dutch lands. Okay. Well, I guess we'll we'll, f we'll figure this out. We'll have an eye on that. Uh, for the rest, Tunis is still at war with Liguria, but there are also tons of peasants trying to take over some lands. Crimea is completely occupied. Wow. So Muscovy, uh, their lands are not really touched yet. They're still relatively un unscathed. But Crimea is going to get absolutely demolished. That I can say for sure. And look at Sami. Look at sneaky Sami. Just uh, <laughs> making their way here to uh, to the Aral Sea. Uh, trying to cut off the Ryazanians. And honestly, just one more province and they've done it. And I think this is, might also be why the Ryazanians are interested in fighting Crimea here because if they take over like these provinces they will probably uh, you know continue to be able to colonize whereas uh, Sami is really trying trying hard to cut off the Ryazanians here we'll see we'll see if they're successful with that I mean just one war and and the Sami will be destroyed I mean there's no way they're gonna be able to defend such a long border um, but we'll see uh, it looks like Muscovy is doing a Pretty good job of holding their own, but wow, they're just getting overwhelmed by numbers there. They, they were fighting well. They were fighting well in that battle here, but it's too much. It's just too much. Transylvania has left Bulgaria with one province here in Europe, but Bulgaria is still at war. Now with Romania. Oh my gosh. They, they don't want to wanna give them uh, time to breathe, right? Uh, but I'm not sure if that was a smart move, because Bulgaria still has men. It's not like they're completely without any forces. But they are currently besieging a mountain fortress. So if, they, if they're being attacked... Oh, no, they got it. They got it right before the enemy army was, was, was coming. So they should win this battle as well because even though they're attacking... Yeah, okay. So I think with the capital besieged, Romania has just sealed their own uh, death warrant here. They're, they're dead. They will not be able to... Uh, stand against Bulgaria. But Bulgaria is almost pushed out of Europe. So they... They now only have this under their uh, under their control. Now Syria is going after some more centers of trade or asteroids here in Basra. Have they have they gone after India yet? No, that is still only held by the Egyptians. Okay, Tuscany has uh, definitely grown stronger here in North Africa, and Tunisia has too. And they're now at war with whom? Aragon and Ashanti. Why the Ashanti? Now, the Ashanti actually managed to take a province away from the Portuguese because they were relatively unsuccessful. Now, they are fetishists, actually. So that's cool. And there's a new culture. But I think this culture doesn't really... I mean, should the Ashanti become the great power, I guess we could give them the victory because they started off later than the other nations. So, yeah, I suppose. If, if the Aka culture um, wins... In the end, I, I, yeah, why not? We could give them victory, but I, I doubt that, actually. I doubt that's going to happen. Um, so yeah, Leon is at war with, interestingly, the Architans. Now, it's likely that Aragon's going to get eaten up in this. Um, 
because Leon is right there. They have so, so many men. They have probably already occupied them. Yes. So Aragon will probably have to say goodbye to them, at least to their European holdings. I mean, they still have uh, quite a lot of land here in Africa, which they'll probably uh, keep. But it's, it's likely that they will have to give up these two provinces to Leon, which means they will grow even stronger. And then... Well, the Arc what the heck happened to the Arcatans? Completely occupied by whom? Is that Mor There must be Morocco. For a moment I thought it was the Catalans, but no. Completely occupied by the Moroccans. So they'll peace out. They'll probably have to give lands back to the Catalans. Because I can't, I can't really see what else you would do. Except, of course, if Morocco was to take over lands here. That's possible as well. Hmm, I guess we'll check out their, their peace deals. There's just so many wars going on. Um... Poland has all of Lithuania now taken over. That's good for them. Moscow is now being besieged. Crimea still doesn't get any peace. Poor them. Or maybe they're being stupid and stubborn and trying to uh, win this. Uh, also, the Dutch, their main holdings are completely occupied. The Danish are trying to hold back the onslaught of the Normans. So far, well, actually, they have quite a few men. They have two armies here. The Dutch have 24,000 men as well. Um... But that was kind of bad. They took that river crossing. And they got stack wiped. Oh no, never mind. It's, it looked like they were being stack wiped there. But no, that actually didn't happen. Good for them. Good for them, I suppose. The English either had to give in to, their, to the noble rebels or they won. I, I can't really say for sure. But at least they no longer have these rebels around. Let's have a new look at the religion still there's only one reformed nation and only one protestant nation although that might change soon i could imagine that the hungarians w would convert i mean that's that's very possible crimea had to give in and ryazan just as i expected did take over this one province that was yeah i i, I thought they would do that because they're being actually blockaded here they're being blocked by the sami people <laughs> That's cool, um, but now, now it's basically, if, if the Ryazanians don't sleep, they can take this province, and then they have everything open to them, because it's going to take a long time for the Sami to colonize all of this, to hopefully, or, you know, somehow, try and block them off even further. If they, they need, they now need to colonize one, two, three, four. Four, five, six, yeah, that's not going to happen. They're not going to be able to block them off completely. So, it, Ryazan has done it. Uh, they now just have to hold on to this. But, yeah, it's basically just three people colonizing here. Um, if Crimea even has the power to still do that. Well, it looks okay. Albania didn't really get anything out of this deal now. Did they? Or maybe one province. I think they got like, maybe one province, yeah. Um, and, apparently... They also gained provinces here? I guess they just colonized this, yeah. But Bulgaria grew stronger. They took quite a few lands from the Romanians. That was a stupid war that they declared. I, I see why they did it. Because they wanted to obviously grow stronger. But it was just stupid. It was just stupid to do that. The Greeks... Oh, man. Greeks are being attacked now. Who are you fighting? Transylvania, Venetia... Or, yeah, the Venetians and the Slovaks. Slovaks don't matter. But Transylvania and Venetians... The Venetians are probably pissed off that they were attacked by the Greeks before and had to give up Corfu. So I, we might see them return that now. Um, that's too bad. They have the Yellow Russians and the Sami on their side, but they're too far away to really do anything. So they're, they're mostly left to their own devices here. We see rebels. Ah, still, those are just peasants. Okay, otherwise Saxon nationalists or, or whatever, they could have been more helpful. And what the heck? Whoa, look at the Normans. One, two, three, four, five, six provinces they took from the Danish. Cut them in half. Wow. Oh, that was, that is madness. Normans are mad indeed. Wow. Well, I guess we'll have a look at the great powers. We see the Normans undoubtedly as number one, although that is mostly because the Syrians do not have colonialism embraced. When it, you know, when we just look at development, the Syrians are still number one, and they seem to be at war here. Okay, wow, many wars going on. Um, whew. Wow. Okay, well, this is the world. I guess we'll have last look at the new world. Norman Canada is there, and English Brazil, so far the only colonial nations. 
Well, I certainly like how things are developing. I will also have a look at the culture map mode, probably in the next episode. But that was it for now. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope to see you guys next time.